Good morning, Burlington Baptists. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning. If you take just a moment and share our service, we would so appreciate that. Uh, we're excited that our in-house service is growing. That's exciting. Our, our online service is decreasing a little bit, and so you can help us by sharing the service. We realize this is a great outreach, and there's lots of people who need to hear the good news. And so take a moment and share it. Uh, we're excited about a couple things going on this week. Uh, this week is Bible school. This year it's virtual Bible school. It starts tomorrow night, the 13th, and goes through Wednesday night. It's for children three years old through eighth grade. Uh, you can register online at our website, and you can reserve one of our toolkits. And uh, we'll be using that toolkit this week. And in that toolkit is a parent guide, activity books, crafts, snacks, and then you can join us each night at 6.30 this week on our uh, Facebook page or on our website. And uh, Miss Krishna will be leading our praise. Uh, Kevin and John will be leading a time of fun. And uh, then Bible stories will be by Brandy and Sally. And uh, you can pick up your toolkits tonight at Rock the Block. We'll hope you'll come out for that. And uh, don't miss out on that. Register today. Uh, share it with your neighbors and friends. And uh, I mentioned Rock the Block tonight. We're going to have food trucks and music. The praise team's going to be there. Uh, all that starts at 6 o'clock. And, uh, and so bring your lawn chair and join us. Uh, we'll help you stay uh, socially distanced, and we'll have a good time tonight. And so we hope you'll join us. Uh, we got some uh, groups that started meeting again here at church this morning. We're excited about that. Uh, several more are going to meet on August the 2nd, and we're working on room locations and all that. So uh, put that on your calendar, and hope you can join us by then. And uh, let's begin our service with the word of prayer. Father, thank you that we can gather here this morning, and uh, Lord, we're so excited about this week. We're excited about worship this morning, and, and then rock the block this evening, and Bible school, and, and Lord, we just want to ask you to do something out of the ordinary uh, as uh, our children uh, in their homes uh, watch our services and worship you and do the activities and, and hear the, the lessons about Jesus. We, we pray that you would plant seeds in their hearts. Lord, we pray that some might even be saved this week. We, we would love to celebrate that. Lord, we just pray you'd be here with us this morning as we worship you and we open your word. And uh, we love you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. We are excited to be here this morning. We're excited about uh, Rock the Block tonight, and we're excited about Bible School as uh, Beth and everybody put in a ton of work to make that thing virtual. It's going to be pretty awesome. But uh, let's join together as we stand up. Uh, yell at somebody and tell them hi and tell them that you're happy to see them and make it somebody that you haven't seen before, but uh, don't get too close. One.
the walls apart, open the heavens, Almighty God, you are overcomer, defender of my heart. By your power, the oceans open wide, your fire falls down, heaven and earth collide. Forever by my side Shake the mountains Break the walls apart Open the heavens Almighty God you are Overcome Defender of my heart By your power the oceans open wide, your fire falls down, heaven and earth collide, King Jesus, forever by my side. Your power, your presence, great strongholds, King of heaven, when you speak, mountains move. breakthroughs you know we love we we believe that and he has told us that we believe it um we're gonna pray and we're gonna sing over our offering this morning and like always uh or recently always the offering boxes are out the double doors as you leave on the left hand side the right hand side and out in the center they're the black boxes and the clear box is the dollar club and while we were mentioning that you can pay both your offering or give all to the dollar club online um, and there's multiple ways to give, and we want to tell you again that we appreciate all of the faithful giving, and it has been awesome. So thank you for that, but let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you uh, for the opportunity to sing praises to you. Lord, we know you are worthy, and we thank you so much for the things that you do for us. Lord, thank you for blessing this church in the many ways that you do that. Lord, we want to lift up those um, who are uh, sick or, or dealing with treatments or, or coming out of treatment and doing all of those things, Lord. There's so much going on that we just want to lift all of that up to you and just ask you to work in each one of those situations. Lord, and we just, uh, again, want to thank you for Bible school starting up, and it's, it's a little bit different this year, and we just want to take what, what Beth has done and what everybody who's worked on that has done and just bless it, Lord, and just uh, we want it to be pleasing to you. Lord, just thank you for this offering and those that give it and uh, help us to be responsible and do uh, mighty works for your kingdom with it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Count on one thing to sing God and never fail will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. To sing God is never late. It's working all things out. Working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is empty in all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. 
count on one thing The same God who never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out Working all things out Oh yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name Oh yes, I will sing for joy When my heart is heavy in all my days Oh yes, I will for all my days Oh yes, I will I choose to pray To glorify, glorify the name of our name Nothing can stand against I choose to pray To glorify, glorify the name of our name Nothing can stand against Oh yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name Oh yes, I will with the joy When my heart is heavy Nothing can stand against. I choose to pray to glorify, glorify the name of all men. And nothing can stand against. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Oh yes, I will for all my days. Oh yes, I will for all my days. Oh yes, I will. Amen. You guys have a seat. Amen. All right. So don't forget to share the service this morning. And if you have a Bible, we'll be in Deuteronomy chapter six. We're uh, starting a new series this morning, and uh, we know that just uh, recently, uh, during COVID-19, we had some uh, guidelines for staying uh, healthy at home. We got those in March and April, and then we got some uh, guidelines for healthy at work. This week, we got some guidelines for healthy at school. And I thought I'd do a short series, and we're going to talk about healthy at home, uh, healthy at work, and healthy at church. Uh, guidelines given to us by God. And so hopefully you'll like them better than the ones that we got from the government. Uh, but we'll start with healthy at home. And uh, we're going to look at Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. And uh, as we consider being healthy at home, I want to ask you, are you passing along God's grand story to your family? Are you passing along God's grand story to your family? Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, if you want to stand <clears throat> if you want to set up at home. <laughs> Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And Father, we pray today that we would, we would know you, that you're the one true and living God, that we would love you with all of our heart and mind and soul and, and might. Lord, that we would uh, not only love you, but we would teach you and share you with our children. Lord, I pray that... Uh, you'd bless the parents this morning, that you would encourage them and challenge them and equip them. Uh, Lord, you know that, uh, uh, that I had so many areas of weaknesses when I was a parent, and forgive me of those. Um, Lord, I, I don't preach this morning as an expert, uh, but I, I want to faithfully teach your word. And so help me to do that and give us receptive hearts. And I pray you would use this message to strengthen our families 
uh, for the spread of your gospel, uh, especially to our children. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let me begin by saying, and I say this sadly, that the church is rapidly losing a generation. Uh, depending on what source you look at, <clears throat> we are losing between 66 to 75% of our young people by the end of their first year after high school. And that's been happening for a few decades. And so what that looks like is if I had four seniors up here and I had them stand up, by the end of their first year of college or a year after graduation, there would only be one of them attending church. And so we need to acknowledge that Christianity in America is declining one generation at a time and sadly one home at a time. Now, how has the church responded to that? Well, what's been our answer? And, uh, you know, for the past several decades, uh, the solution was to hire a, a youth pastor or a student pastor. And uh, at least we'd have someone to, to blame when our students leave. Now, Alvin Reed wrote a book called Raising the Bar. And in that book, he said, over the last 40 years, we have seen the largest increase in the number of youth ministers, and we have seen the greatest decline in youth baptisms ever. Now, it's not the youth, problem, youth pastor's problem, but why is that? Why are we hiring more youth pastors and seeing less children saved and baptized? And the reason is, is because parents have stopped evangelizing, teaching, and discipling their children. We've got this drop-the-kids-at-the-door mentality. Now, COVID-19 came along, and we had to stop our kids' programs on Wednesday nights and, and uh, Sunday mornings. And Listen, we want to reach and teach children and, and students. We want to reach them for Christ, and, and we want to disciple them as much as possible. But here's the biggest problem. The Scripture tells us that it's the parent's job to train up a child in the way they should go. Proverbs 22.6. And so, church, we want to and we need to be equipping and assisting parents to do what God has called them to do. We need to get some parents, we need to get some parents more concerned about the things of God. Uh, we need to get them as concerned about the things of God as they are about athletics and academics. And so this message is going to be a little more focused to, to parents and, and grandparents. But I also want our, our young people to, to understand that they have a great responsibility. As you get married and as you have children, there's this great responsibility in regards to teaching our children about the ways of God. And so, parents and, and grandparents, are you passing along God's grand story to your family? So you're listening and you say, Preacher, what do you want us to do? What do you want from us? Well, first of all, we want parents to know God. We want parents to know God. Uh, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This verse contains the Orthodox Jewish confession of faith. It's called the Shema. The word Shema comes from the, the first word in verse 4 is hear. The Hebrew word for, for hear is Shema. And so, uh, hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh is one. And listen, the Jewish children would memorize that verse as soon as they could speak. And the verse means that the Lord, Yahweh, His covenant name, the Lord is totally unique. The Lord is God. And, and Moses knew it was important for Israel to affirm that there is but one true and living God. And listen, it's never been more important for us to affirm uh, that there is one God. It's not Allah, it's not Buddha or Muhammad. There are not many gods. There is one true and living God. And God, it is the God who has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. And listen, church, there's not many ways to heaven. There's one way. It's faith in Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says, nor is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby a man must be saved. That's Acts 4.12. One way to be saved is through Jesus and so, you know, there are lots of cults today, and they like to use the name Jesus, but they don't believe that Jesus was God. And there are some liberals today who say that Jesus never claimed to be divine, that Jesus never claimed to be God. Listen, that's not true. And we can show them it's not true. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 24. Uh, so the Jews gathered around him, around Jesus, and they said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? 
If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness to me. But you do not believe me because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hands. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And Jesus knew what he was saying. The Jews knew what he was saying. Matter of fact, in verse 31, the next verse, the Jews picked up stones again to stone him. They were going to stone him because it was blasphemy uh, to claim to be God. And so we want parents to know God so that they can point their children to God. We want parents to know there is but one true and living God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who sent Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. And because God is one, he demands... And not only does he demand, but he deserves our singular devotion above everything else. And listen, he will not accept second fiddle to anything that he has created because he is God. So not only do we want our parents to to know God, but secondly, we want parents to love God. Now, this is verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. One of the most important commitments and priorities in life, listen, we could say our highest calling in life is to love God with all of our heart, all our soul, and all of our might. Now, it's not necessary for me to distinguish between heart and soul and might. Listen, uh, Moses is simply referring to loving God with everything within us, nothing held back, nothing in reserve. David said in Psalm 103, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. And so we're to love and bless the Lord. Now let me ask a question. Is it possible to command someone to love? Isn't love just a a warm emotion? You either have it or you don't. Or According to Scripture, uh, in the life of a believer, love is an act of the will. You say, what do you mean, act of the will? Listen, we're, we're commanded to love our neighbors. Anybody have an unlovable neighbor? We're commanded to love our enemies. <laughs> Anybody have a warm emotion towards your enemies? No, but we are to act in a loving way to them no matter how we may feel. And so, listen, love isn't about feelings. R- rather, love, is, love leads to actions. I'll give you an example. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved us and he gave his son. Uh, But God showed his love for us that while we are yet sinners, now God hates sin. Romans 5, 8 says, while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so loving, worshiping, serving God is our highest calling. It's our highest privilege, and so God calls us and commands us to that which is best. Our chief end in life is to love Him. And so I'll ask you, do you love Him? Do you love Him with all your heart? Do you treasure Him above all else? And could He look at your life and your actions and see your love for Him? We want parents to know God. We want parents to love God. And then here's where I really want to get to this morning. We want parents to teach about God. And this is probably where we struggle the most. Listen, we want our children to know God. We want our children to love God. Listen, I want you to realize this. If our children leave home without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it's very likely that they will never come into such a relationship. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying that God doesn't save people later on in life. But here's what the statistics tell us. That only 6% over the age of 19 will profess Christ. And so what do we do about that? Well, we give our children the gospel. We teach them the gospel. We teach them the truths of the gospel. We live out the gospel. We know what the gospel is. The gospel is a message about God who is our creator. And he created us and he loved us. And our God is holy. And yet he created us in his image, and we sin. We choose to sin. We're sinners by nature, and our sin separates us from God. Our sin deserves punishment. 
And yet God solved the problem. God loved us even while we were yet sinners. He sends Jesus, and Jesus came, lived a sinless life. He went to the cross and took our sins upon him, died in our place, paid the punishment for our sins. He died, was buried, he was raised again. He arose in victory over sin, and he offers to forgive us. And if we want to respond to that offer, we turn from our sins and we believe upon Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. We want our children to know and understand the gospel. We want to talk to our children uh, about the gospel. And, And so let's get specific here. Before we can teach our children, parents must treasure the truth. And so verse 6, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. And so before we can instruct our children, these words must be on our hearts. And so parents need to know the truth of God's Word. They need to meditate upon those truths and then live those truths out. And so I want to encourage parents this morning. I want to encourage you to be involved in a, in a Bible study. I want you to be growing so that you can teach your children. We're trying to make sure we have life groups and Bible studies for, for everybody. And we're, we're going to make some changes in August. And we're going to encourage you, strongly encourage you to be in a Bible study while your children are in a Bible study. Now listen, children are quick at picking up our priorities. And so parents, I want you to realize that you play such an important role. And here's the point. Your children need to see you learning and treasuring the Word of God. And just notice verse 8 and 9. Uh, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Now, the Jewish people took this commands literally. They wrote portions of scriptures and put them in little boxes called frontlets, and they wore them on their, their forehead. They wrapped them around their, their left arm, and they attached small pieces of scriptures to their door frames and, and every door of their house. And listen, we don't most of us don't wear frontlets or phylacteries, but the Word of God ought to be on display in our homes and and in other areas of our lives. Why is that? Because where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. And so not only are we to treasure the Word of God, but we're to model the Word of God. Abraham Lincoln said, there is but one way to train up a child in the way he should go, and that's to travel it yourself. To model it, to live it out. A good example is worth a thousand sermons. Let me say this. Your child, your children will walk your walk before they talk your talk. And what you do has more impact on your children than all the lectures you could ever give them. Now, you want to know why there's so many church-going parents who produce children who abandon their faith? Here's what I found. I think there's a big difference between church-going parents... And Christ's loving parents. Let me say that again. There's a big difference between church going parents and Christ's loving parents. And here's the truth parents, you aren't fooling your children. If your faith and your religion is just a religious gig on Sunday mornings and your children see nothing of a love relationship with God Monday through Saturday, they're going to get out as soon as possible. Anybody get a flu shot? You know what they do? They inject a small amount of the real thing so that your body builds up an immunity to the virus. I believe that's what some parents are doing to their children. They're they're giving their children just a small dose of Christianity, and, and, and they don't comprehend the real thing. Can I ask parents and grandparents and adults, when most kids look at you, do they see a passionate relationship with Almighty God? And so parents must first treasure the truth, and then parents must teach the truth. We have to teach our children about God. And so verse 7, you shall teach them diligently to your children. That that word diligent is shall not. It means to sharpen or to wet. And so who is this verse verse is talking to? It's talking to parents. Parents, teach your children. Proverbs 28, my son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. And so in that verse, the the father is the instructor, the mother is the teacher. There is this shared responsibility. It's not that the father goes to work so he can bring home the bacon so that the mother teaches or the mother works in the office so that the father instructs. No, it's both. It's it's father instructing, mother teaching. And listen, I know we're all so busy and we can't find, listen, we've got to figure it out. Here's some suggestions in verse 7. 
when you sit in your house. I, I'd call that slow time. That's during meals and after dinner and family time. When you walk by the way, that, we call that go time. That's, that's maybe while you're driving somewhere. When you lie down, that's downtime or, or bedtime or right before bedtime. When you rise up, that, that's up time. That's when you're having breakfast or you're getting ready. We've got to find the time. We have to point, take the time to point our children to Christ. And listen, as a church, we want to help, but, but we can never take your place. The average church might spend between 40 and 50 hours a year with your children. Compare that to 2,500 hours that you have as a parent. If a student sleeps eight hours a night, that means that they have about 112 waking hours a week. And if we're lucky and COVID's not going on, we might get one of those 112. And so the Lord's instructions through Moses, verse 7, is so very specific. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk with them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. And yet, 92% of families don't have devotional time. Not even once a year. 92% of families don't ever have a devotional time. The average Christian family has less than 30 minutes of spiritual discussion each week. In church, we desperately... Now listen, we desperately need more Deuteronomy 6 values being passed along to students by parents. I wonder how often our student pastors and maybe children workers hear something like, well, we won't be at church for the next few weeks or next few months because Johnny has made the traveling soccer team or the baseball team or you fill in the blank. Listen, you, can't, you think your, parent, your kids can't figure out your priorities? For some reason, we think our kids need to win some trophies. They'll just sit in the basement for 20 years collecting dust. They need the trophies more than they need the Lord. And so maybe God this morning is calling some of you to change some of your family priorities. And if your priorities are basically we go to church on Sunday unless something better comes along, don't be surprised if your child drops out of church at the first available opportunity. We must treasure the Word of God. We must teach the Word of God. And so here's the question. Well, listen, what good does it do to raise our children in the finest homes and send them to the finest schools and get them the finest education so they can get out of school and get the best jobs in order to get the finest things in life only to end up in a grave and stand before God in judgment one day, stand before a God they don't even know. And so if you're not influencing your children for Jesus Christ, then you're failing at your primary responsibility and mission as a parent. Their greatest need above the trophies, above the accolades, is the gospel of Jesus Christ and a personal relationship with Christ. And so do your children know the priority and the need for a relationship with Jesus Christ? Do they know that need through your example? And do they see in your home a place where the Lord Jesus Christ is loved and, and taught? What we learn from the Bible is that the family, and the parents in particular, is God's basic school for teaching children. And yes, as a church, we want to partner with you. But ultimately, my kids are my responsibility, not the youth pastor, not the children workers, not the church. They're my responsibility, and I believe that I'll give an account of how I raise my children, and you will too. And I know we live in a most rushed age, and we say, when do I have the time? Well, listen, Mom and Dad. You'd better make time to instruct your children about God. Parents and teachers, your, your children is not only a, uh, teaching your children is not only a command, but it's one of the most wonderful privileges in life. We want you to be healthy at home because at home you're pointing your children to Jesus. Pray with me. Father, your word is sharp. Oh, it's sharp. It's cut me this week and and again, I realize my lack of doing all that I could, do, could when I was a parent. But Lord, teach us today and encourage us and challenge us. And, and Lord, help us to see areas where we're not pouring the gospel into our children. Speak to our hearts. Lord, Just uh, we, we invite you in these next few minutes to, uh, to really do a work in the lives of moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. Help us to see the need for us to love Jesus and teach Jesus. 
Help us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, as we prepare for just a time of invitation, let me ask you, is, is the Holy Spirit maybe speaking to your heart this morning? And Listen, before you can teach your children about the Lord, you, you've got to know Him personally. And, and so let me ask you, maybe mom and dad, have you trusted in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life? And, and let me ask you, do, you, do you love Him with everything within you? And will you teach your children? Will you teach the next generation about Jesus? And maybe this morning you need to ask the Lord just to help you change some of your priorities. And maybe you need to cry out to the Lord today for your child. It's never too late to do that. Maybe some of you have grown kind of set in your ways, and, and maybe this is for the church, but maybe you're really not that concerned about reaching young people. Well, let me just tell you, Jesus loved children. And you better think about that. And church, we better pull up our, roll up our sleeves and, and help reach this generation. Church, we be good, better be good stewards of, of these facilities and, and all the opportunities that God gives us to reach our children. And Jesus loved the little children, and we ought to as well.
Listen, I know the word is, is weighty sometimes, and we just want to offer uh, our assistance. If, if we could help you with a relationship with Christ, uh, you could call us here at the church, or you could email me at hbest at burlingtonbaptist.org. Uh, listen, I or Danny or Jeff or Beth, we, we'd love to talk to your children about the Lord. We, we'd love to share some resources. I, I got this little book called The Gospel, and it's just a simple uh, plan of uh, of the gospel and uh, we, there's resources that we could share with you uh, we, we don't want you to feel burdened down by this we want to encourage you we want to equip you we want to give you resources and we want to tell you we're there to help you as you uh, seek to, to talk to your children about Jesus and uh, this week's Bible school and uh, maybe uh, through Bible school we're able to be doers of the word and not hearers only and so maybe this week is you take three nights Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and you can sit down with your children and, and go through the activities and, and watch the services on our website and, and uh, we'll talk about the gospel and uh, be an awesome opportunity for you to, uh, to have some discussions with your children and so join us this week uh, come tonight uh, 6 o'clock get your toolkit and uh, we look forward to hearing how God uses our Bible school this year. Danny? Uh, like Brother Harold said, come out tonight. It's going to be really, really great. Uh, Toolkits and ice cream and food. And, I mean, that's a whole bunch of good stuff. Uh, like I said, all, on your way out, don't forget about the Dollar Club and uh, the offering boxes out there. And uh, let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you so much for this opportunity again to just uh, learn a little bit about your word and what it means in our lives. Lord, we just, uh, we just appreciate um the playbook that you gave us for parenting and, and just for living, Lord, uh, help us to just adhere to those things and, and to be serious about uh, wanting to get closer to you in that way. Lord, just continue to bless this church and, and bless our Rock the Block tonight and our Bible school, Lord, and like I said, make it something that's pleasing to you, Lord, and help us to reach out and, and, and touch not just the kids, but the parents and, and all of those involved. We just, uh, we just thank you so much for that opportunity and uh, continue to just uh, to work through us in the way that you can. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.